Hey guys, welcome to Tiny House. Why the water little rock? Hey guys, welcome to Tiny House Customs. I'm Dan. A few months ago, I did a video about mold in my tiny house. Uh, the whole reason that I was having mold issues was because I didn't have a proper ventilation system installed in my house. So every time I took a shower, all that moisture from the shower got into the house and stuck to the plywood, causing the mold. Now, that happened during the cold months. In the summer, it's not bad. There's not as much moisture. I think it's because it's got to do with some heats and vapor. I don't know exactly what the, the scientific thing is, but in the winter, it's really, really bad. So you need to get that moisture out of your house. So you can see right up here, right behind me, there is four vents that I installed into my tiny house. Everything that produces moisture in my house I'm gonna vent out. I could have teed stuff off and had just one or two uh, vents coming out of the house, but I figured it would be better this way so I didn't have anything back flowing into the house. So I'm gonna take you inside and show you what the plans are for my vents and show you one of them that I've already installed. Sound good? Sounds good to me. <laughs> oh, my drink. So those four vents come in right up here. And this is, I'm gonna call it my attic. I've got an attic in my tiny house. It's going to be an unaccessible area once the house is done. Uh, I'll probably put something in there so I can get into it. But those four vents come directly through that wall into this space right here. Now, right where I'm standing, basically, I'm on a ladder right now, but where I'm standing is a washer and dryer. And I'm going to put an actual dryer. I'm not putting the combo unit in. If you've done any research on the combo washer and dryer, where it's just one enclosed unit, those units don't use any heat to dry your clothes. Basically, it washes them and then it spins them. It'll stop and, and agitate it so it falls down and then it'll spin it again, do the same thing over and over again. It's never using heat to dry your clothes. So basically, you're getting a semi-damp clothing where you, you really need to hang them outside, which I don't have anything wrong with that. I don't want that. I think that's very inconvenient. So instead of going that route, I'm going to get a stackable washer and dryer that's very narrow, very small. The washing machine will run off 120 volt and then the dryer will run off propane. One, two, three. So number three will be the vent that comes straight up here. It'll 90 down and go straight outside and that'll be my dryer. So right here is going to be my stove. This again, when you're boiling water, it's creating moisture. I want to get that out plus the smells from cooking. I want to get those out as well. So I'm gonna try, I don't know, I haven't seen one yet, haven't been able to find what I really want, but a range vent that needs to be the width of this stove, and the stove is only like two feet. So I'll do a range vent right here. I'll have that pipe go up. I'm gonna have to do a lot of, uh, a lot of work right up in that top corner right there. I'm gonna cut out the top plate, the stud, one of the, the joists I'll call them, and the plate in the back and that'll go out that way, and then I will have some flexible piping that runs in that attic all the way down, and will go into number two. So you can't really see, but right back here is my hot water heater. Now this is an exterior hot water heater. This is emitting carbon monoxide, I believe. Yeah, I think that's the word, carbon monoxide into my house. Very bad, especially now that I'm insulated into the house. That carbon monoxide can kill you, it can kill your pets. So you really need to get a direct vent hot water heater, which I will install. And when I do, that number four vent all the way against the outside of the house will come straight up and go out that, that vent. Now, the vent on the outside was plastic, if you saw. I, I will replace that with an all metal one once I get to that stage. But since I have a vent in my bathroom, I haven't had any carbon monoxide issues. When I didn't have this installed, I could notice it was, it was a little toxic. So several years ago, I was in the tiny house envy stage or the design or the planning phase of my builds. And I was probably just like you on every tiny house tour video you could watch. Uh, back then, there wasn't that many, but there was great information for me to take away from other people's projects, what they've learned and issues they've had. But one of the videos that I watched, the lady said she wished she spent a little bit more money on her bathroom vent because it was so loud when she turned it on. Uh, bathroom vents are rated on the sewn scale. The lower the sewn number, the quieter it'll be. Uh, it will go all the way down to, I believe like 0.3 is what this one is. I went with the best that I could find. There was better up to the $200 range, but it did way more than what I needed for the space that I have. And it was running off of higher voltage, which I wanted to stay under the 120 volt and I wanted to be 
a low amperage, a low amp draw, so that when I do solar, it'll be it'll be okay. I'm gonna turn it on right now. So when you turn this thing on, there is an LED light right in the corner. Uh, blue means it's on, but it's not running right now. It is. It, there's a sensor in this fan that will sense the moisture in your house and when it reaches a certain point, I can't remember what it was, but when it reaches a obviously a critical point, it'll automatically turn on and start venting your house. I think that's freaking awesome. So if I wanna turn it on, if I'm jumping in the shower, I know I'm gonna be creating moisture, I can just flip the light switch off and back on right away and it'll go, what is that, amber? I'll say yellow, but it's, it's I think it's yellow, but I think that word is amber. Amber, isn't that red? I don't know but it changes color. In the yellow, it's running. So right now, you cannot hear that. I guarantee you can't hear that. It's super, super quiet. You almost have to like be quiet to listen to it. But it is absolutely great. Uh, when I jump in the shower in the morning to get ready for work, I make sure that's on, turn my, my shower on, hot as I freaking want it, to the point where it's burning my skin. Moisture just starts pouring out of that thing goes directly into the vent and sucks it out. Another great thing is that my hot water heater, which is just temporary, I probably should have said that at the beginning, but this is just a temporary solution to a problem that I'm having, but that'll vent it out as well. And so I'm not having a carbon monoxide issue in the house. So when you're doing your research on these fans, they go by cubic feet per minute. So how much air it sucks out in a minute. Now this one does about 80 cubic feet a minute. I went a little bit bigger than what I needed, and also it's really hard to find a, an exhaust fan, a bathroom exhaust fan that's under 80 cubic feet. So I'm gonna throw this picture up here. 0.3 sewn, 80 cubic feet, white bathroom fan, Energy Star model 7131-01. Four star reviews. So this is just connected into some flex pipe right here. I used a four inch hose clamp and I connected it here and I also connected it to the, the vent that goes towards the outside. And then I also used some very sticky tape to seal it up completely. So if the clamp fails, it won't break free. The tape will hold it. Plus the tape's also gonna give it a better seal over time. Uh, I don't plan on going up in here ever to really fix anything. I want this to be good for years. So doing more now will save me time later, save me a headache later. So this drop sealing is absolutely great for this application. I can run all the vent pipes inside of here and I can run wires up in there. I have my drop down lights or my, what are they called? Recess lights, they're not drop down. I have my recess lights up in here and it's just perfect. Everything about this makes me happy. For the dryer, I definitely wanna use solid pipe so I can clean it. So if I have a lint problem, I can clean it out easier. This flex pipe will hold lint, will hold, hold dust and stuff like that. So if you have something that creates dust like the dryer, you wanna use solid pipe so it's, it's easier to clean and it'll basically clean itself. You don't have to clean it out as much. Flex pipe is definitely a fire hazard. I think I went over everything I wanted to go in this video. So one thing I forgot to add is with having an exhaust fan like this or all the other exhaust fans I have, I'm gonna create a negative pressure in the house. So the air needs to come from somewhere and I don't really have a place because the house is gonna be sealed up so well um, the, the air is going to come through certain places. It'll come in through cracks in the doors and the windows. So one thing that you need to be mindful is when having an exhaust like this, if you have a fireplace or a chimney and you have that fire running and you turn this thing on, it's going to create a negative pressure and you could pull ashes, smoke down the chimney and into the house. So that's something to be concerned about. Also composting toilets, the ones you have to buy, the really expensive composting toilets, most of them have a small fan in it to exhaust the odors out. What will happen with that is you'll be creating a backflow on that, that fan and it's gonna burn that motor up because air is gonna be going in the opposite direction because this is gonna be stronger than the fan that's in your composting toilet. So that's just something to be mindful of. Also, there is this thing called a air exchange unit uh, I haven't done too much research on it. I was just researching it a little bit ago and it really looks like a good option for a tiny house. It's as close to like geothermal as you can get. They're definitely expensive. I would recommend doing research on it before you decide to put one in. Uh, they are pretty big, so I don't know where you'd put one. Um, I'm gonna look into it more. It'll probably be an afterthought. 
I can always run that in the uh, crawl space of my tiny house and have two vents out the back, hopefully, I don't know. But those air exchangers draw in air from the outside and take air out and in process, it crosses over each other and they heat and cool each other so that the air that comes back into your house is closer to the temperature that your house is already at. So it's, it's a very efficient way of exchanging the air, especially being such a tight, small space. You need to get air circulation, otherwise you're gonna get sick, you know? And I could totally see, totally see this, when they write the laws to make tiny houses legal, that you need to have an air exchanger in it. It would make sense because it's such a confined space. I think the main issue is with health. It's not really, it's about taxes, but health would be a big red flag for people to say yes on tiny houses. So I could see air exchangers being huge in the future. Why do I always look away? Like I can't just look at the camera. I gotta, it's scary. It's scary when you look at a camera. But I hope this video was helpful for you. I know these were things that I was concerned about while doing this whole tiny house thing was, was moisture in the house. The mold was a huge problem last year and this is going to prevent that from happening again this year. So I'm very happy to have that in there. Uh, I would strongly recommend checking that out. I'll put the link for that, this model in the uh, description below. I got it at Lowe's and it was $100, which is I think the top of what you're probably gonna spend. But thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Keep it positive. I love positive comments, and they are very helpful and motivating to me. I like them. I don't like negative comments. They really bother me. But hey, peace and love. Come on. I thought tiny house people were hippies. Not so much in the comments. You negative bastards, whatever. If you want to help support this channel, please go check out my Patreon page. The link's going to be in the description below. If you'd like to really support it right here, I have hats, beanies, tiny house custom beanies. They're $20. Link's in the description below. Check it out, guys. These are absolutely great when you buy one because it really helps the channel out. Uh, right now, I got about 50 available. So consider purchasing one, even if you don't need one, purchase it. And then you can give it to like a homeless shelter. I mean, that would be the greatest thing if I like were walking down the street in the city and I saw a homeless guy wearing a tiny house customs hat. That would make me feel good. You don't need to wear it. You can order it and then in the, in the notes say, give it to a homeless guy. I'll do that. I would appreciate it. Don't, I mean, whatever you want to do. Everything's great. I love life. I can't believe you like Panthers. Listen, I live in North Carolina. You can't like say, you can't go to McDonald's and be like, hey, I want a non-Panthers cup. You see all those buckets right there? That's composting toilet day. Meaning I need to go and I dumped them all and now they're, they're cleaning right now. A little water. I'd say I put some leach in it, but I didn't. Just water. I put the lids on so Peanut doesn't drink the water. I mean, I'm clever. You're not clever, you are slow. Peanut, that doesn't make sense.